Now that you've correctly fitted your iWalk, let's start walking. Walking with your iWalk crutch is easy and intuitive once you learn how. Follow our instructions and soon you'll be walking in confidence and safety. Before you start, let's go over a few prerequisites. Pick a place with a hard, flat surface. Avoid padded carpet and uneven terrain. Choose an area with no obstacles that will allow you to take 10 or more steps without stopping. Make sure there's a wall, guardrail, counter, or similar that you can use if you need help balancing. Use shoes with flat soles. Avoid open toes or open heels. Learning with bare feet is often preferable to shoes. Be patient and persistent. Some people adapt in minutes, some take longer. Allow 10 minutes to a couple hours to learn the basics. Most people learn quicker if the eye walk leg is slightly shorter than the good leg. Adjust the lower leg height adjustment down by one setting before you start. After you adapt, you'll adjust it back to equal leg length. Using a wall or handrail to steady yourself, put the crutch on. Make sure the straps are fully tightened. Stand with weight equally distributed on both legs. Feet hip width apart, keep your head up, avoid the temptation to look down. Before you walk, we're going to do a couple of practice exercises. Place your hand on the handle. Lean slightly toward the eye walk side and shift most of your weight onto the eye walk. Then slowly lean forward and when it feels natural, take a half step forward with your good leg. Try to keep your back straight and don't bend at the waist. Again, put most of your weight on the eye walk leg and step back to return to the starting position. Try again, step forward, then back. Repeat this exercise until you can do it fluidly. Continue the exercise, but this time step back slightly further behind your eye walk foot. Keep going until your motion is consistent and fluid. Okay, now it's time to try walking. First, check to make sure your straps are still fully tightened. Repeat the exercise, and when you're ready, instead of stepping back, continue walking forward. Keep your hand on the handle and remember to put the majority of your weight on the eye walk side. Once you've started walking, don't stop. When you need to turn around, steady yourself with a wall, rail, back of a chair, or whatever is available. Turn around by putting all your weight on the good leg, then pivot on your good leg until you make the turn. Return to the start position. Lean slightly toward the eye walk side, putting most of your weight on the eye walk. Like before, lean forward slightly and start walking, starting with your good leg. As soon as you're feeling confident, let go of the handle and let your arms swing naturally. When you're walking fluidly, you should restore the lower height adjustment to give you equal leg length. The crutch should immediately feel more efficient now that your legs have equal length. If you're feeling fatigue in your good leg, glutes, or lower back, that's normal and will resolve as you adapt. Give it some time. Congratulations, you've made it through the basic adaptations for walking. In this section, we're gonna show you how to optimize the fit of your eye walk for maximum efficiency. When standing or walking, you want the tread to be in full contact with the ground when you walk. Walking on the outside of the foot or the inside of the foot makes walking more difficult. This happens because your particular leg shape is causing the eye walk to angle in or out relative to vertical, but it's easy to fix. And it's done by adjusting the thigh supports. First, note that you have both an inner thigh support and an outer thigh support. Start by taking the crutch off and loosening the thumb screws. Note your initial numbered settings. Here's what to do if you're walking on the outside edge of the foot. Lift and rotate the outer thigh support outwardly to increase the number setting by one. Finish by rotating the inner thigh support inwardly to decrease the number setting by one. Then tighten the thumb screw. Test your new settings. If you're still walking on the outer edge of the foot, repeat the process until you're walking with the entire width of the tread contacting the ground. If you're walking on the inside edge of the tread, do the opposite. Lift and rotate the inner thigh support outwardly to increase the numbered setting by one. Finish by rotating the outer thigh support inwardly to decrease the numbered setting by one. Then tighten the thumb screws. Test your new settings. 
If you're still walking on the inner edge of the foot, repeat the process until you're walking with the entire width of the tread contacting the ground. Next, we're gonna fine tune the gait strap, which is located on the front of the crutch between the two vertical tubes. The function of the gait strap is to keep your leg from pushing between the two tubes. Properly positioned, the gait strap will be close to the knee platform and will prevent your leg from going too far forward. The gait strap works in tandem with the strap that goes behind your knee. So if the strap is coming loose, it might be because the gait strap is too high. Different shoes can change the length of your leg. When you change shoes, you might need to adjust the lower crutch height to maintain equal leg length. One of the best things about the iWalk is that it allows you to use the stairs safely. When ascending or descending stairs, always use the handrail. To go up, start with your good leg. Follow with the iWalk leg going one step at a time, then repeat. The recommended way to descend the stairs is to go down backwards. Start with your iWalk leg, followed by your good leg. Continue to descend one step at a time. An alternative method is to descend facing forward. This method only works if the handrail is on the opposite side of your iWalk leg. Start with your iWalk leg. You cannot go straight down the stairs because your injured foot may hit the uphill step. Instead, turn partially sideways before descending. This allows your injured foot to clear the uphill step. Follow with the good leg and continue descending. When walking up or down steep slopes, use the same technique as you would on stairs. If you have an assistant, try not to rely on them any more than is necessary. Over-reliance on an assistant can increase the time it takes you to learn. After you've mastered your eye walk for short trips, you can walk without strapping in. Use the handle to keep the crutch firmly in contact with your upper and lower leg. At some point, you're going to do what we call stubbing your eye toe. This happens when you're bringing your crutch leg from back to front and don't lift your hip high enough for the eye walk tread to clear the ground. This can be pretty scary, but it rarely results in a fall because your good foot is firmly planted on the ground in front of you. A quick hop is usually the worst thing that happens. This condition will typically self-resolve pretty quickly. If you're still having trouble walking, our tech support staff will help troubleshoot. Small adjustments can make a big difference. If possible, use your phone. Take a video of you using your iWalk. Position the camera so we can see you head to foot and take at least five steps towards the camera. Then turn around and take at least five steps away from the camera. Send us your video via the tech support page of our website and an iWalk free technician will evaluate and make recommendations for improvements.